The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mary was afraid, and you can't blame her. And so the angel, recognizing this, said to her, Do not be afraid. The word coming from God immediately quells her fear. God is speaking to her. What a wonder when God speaks to us. Mary did not doubt that wasn't the root of her fear, but she did want more information about this visit. How can this be? Her answer to the angel wasn't, I don't believe you. How can it be? How are we going to get on with this plan? And then the angel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Now the Blessed Virgin must yield to the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit. The gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit that animate humanity to give praise and glory to the God. This is for the purpose of helping to save humanity. How many times have we made a mess of things in our own plans, by the way? Anybody can relate to that? And how many times has God intervened to fix things for us? He's not leaving us abandoned. And so I'd like to meditate a little bit on the words of the prophet Nathan, who spoke to David about God's promises for his people, which I'm sure the Blessed Virgin knew about these promises because I think they fortified her and one of those promises says this. This is God speaking through the prophet Nathan. I took you from the pastures. 
He's saying that to David because David was a shepherd. But he took him from the pastures. David's life was greatly upgraded from that point on, wasn't it? And this is what God wants to do to us. He desires to upgrade our lives. We are not mere animals to be seen as that way any longer because of the incarnation. We are supernatural because Christ lives in us. He, this Christ, is the uniting of our humanity with his divinity. What a magnificent upgrade for us. And then the prophet Nathan says, I have destroyed your enemies. Wow. For us, that comes out to something like this. This is from the reading of one of the possible readings for a funeral mass. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment will touch them. This has to do with our eternal life. And when we trust in God as the Blessed Virgin Mary did, he trusts us to his care, and no torment will touch us. And we're talking about the resurrection here. Christ has conquered death and vanquished the devil in all his power. The souls of the just are in the hand of God. No torment shall touch them. That applies to all of us if we so desire it as the Blessed Virgin desired to have Christ enter her. I will make you famous like the great ones on earth. For us, I think this means he wants to make us famous in his eyes as saints. We have a great devotion to saints. We cherish them. We cherish their history. We cherish the wisdom they've given to us. And we cherish the fact that we may get to meet them someday. How I would love to have a salient conversation with St. Thomas Aquinas or Joseph and Mary. I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth, a priestly people born to reside in heaven. This is what God wants for us. These promises should quell our fears. I will fix a place for my people, the prophet goes on to say, because in my father's house there are many dwelling places. I have prepared a place for you, Jesus would say in the Gospel of John. And there is a place for us if we so desire. And then the next promise is this, I will plant you so that you may dwell without disturbance. Here we are at the Holy Mass, where we may dwell without disturbance. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, the opening ritual says. And then peace be with you to quell fear and anxiety. Peace be with you. This final promise I want to mention, he, he says, nay, the prophet Nathan says, I will raise you up. Who wants one of those? I will raise you up. And this is the will of the one who sent me, Jesus would say, that I should raise him up on the last day. This is his desire. This is Jesus. Apparently an inconspicuous infant coming to us on Christmas Day, and yet such grandeur that he can make the impossible happen for us. Our Heavenly Father promises these things for us. But like Mary, we must 
give him permission to enter into our hearts, to open to him the manger of our hearts, and to courageously beg God, to courageously beg him maybe with the words, oh God, come to my assistance. Oh Lord, make haste to help me. And so with Mary, this last day of Advent, we beg our Heavenly Father in words from her mouth. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Amen.